Talk Bowling, episode 119. I'm Dustin Seymour. I'm Tony Rucco. I'm Rich Caruba. Talk Bowling is proud to bring you the latest information from the bowling industry, bowling tips, and updates from the world's largest bowling website, BowlingBall.com. Rich in the house again. I'm here. I love it. I love doing this. I only get into the headquarters offices here periodically, folks. I basically work remotely, but uh, it's a pleasure to be here with these distinguished gentlemen and the rest of the staff and the facility and uh, anything we can do to communicate what we know and what we share, we would love to share with you. So thank you for having me. We're glad to have you. Absolutely. So we have a question from YouTube. How far have bowling balls come in terms of ball reaction and reading the lane in the past five years? I have a Storm Rain Supreme, which is still in great shape. I'm just wondering if it's worth it to buy a new ball. All right, Tony. <laughs> there have been some very important technical advances in the last five years. I don't know that it's quite as big of a gap as what we maybe saw in the mid to late 90s that gap when reactive got into play uh, there's a lot of cores and cover stocks that are still being used today that were used five years ago um, we're, we're limited and when I say we I mean the ball manufacturers the USBC has specs on cores they have specs on cover stocks and there's only so much we can do so a lot of the innovations we've seen have been in shape and it's been in trying to alter the amount of mass we take out of a ball when we drill it. So you'll pay attention to uh, a lot of the shapes. Storm is really good about it. They pay a lot of attention to the shape of the core is designed so that you don't take as much mass out of it when you drill your thumb hole or your finger hole. So that's where I think a lot of the innovations this is a kind of an opinionated question because I don't know that a ball from five years ago really rolls any worse than a ball from today. But there's been some behind the scenes innovations uh, in core shape, a little bit in cover stock materials. We've seen some new materials pop up here in the last few years that have been really, really good for everyone. But my opinion is I still have bowling balls that are five years old and they roll just as good as a ball I punched yesterday. So, If, if that's been your only ball for five years, even <laughs> if you've kept up yeah. amazing maintenance, you will have lost a little bit of production. No doubt. Um, so it, it's not to say that the ball doesn't still have a use, it very well could, but you may need something maybe on top of that that will give you a little more reaction, maybe it is a little more suited for today's conditions. Correct. Uh, and you may not know, you may not realize how much they have changed until you do throw something updated. And it really, you know, just having that fresh cover stock, having a little bit newer core technology might give you a little bit better pin carry, yeah. a little more angle on the back end. I'd like to interject something there, and, and these gentlemen are, are spot on with it, what they say. Uh, when you go from manufacturer to manufacturer and you buy a bowling ball, they could have the identical specs where you think you got about the same differential, the same RG, uh, the same amount of mass bias, uh, and even a similar cover stock. Rarely they react identically. They'll transition slightly different moment in the mid lane and then again at the break point or at the back end uh, and so it's important a lot of bowlers like to stick with the same same uh, manufacturers and change if they're going to get a new bowling ball because then they can kind of count on having a little different ball motion uh, to you know complement their arsenal you can use an older ball uh, it just keep an eye on the wear on the on the ball track on the surface of it. it. I think Tony or Dustin said something about surface maintenance. That's really important. I've written a lot of articles about that for in bowlversity for you folks to read. Uh, keep the surface of the ball uh, updated, refresh it, and uh, get the cor the cover texture the way you want it for the gripping power on the lane based on the given lane condition and oil patterns that you encounter most frequently. Yep, clean the ball every three games. Make it happen. All good stuff. Yes. We have another question from YouTube. Oh, and that, sorry, that first question was from Domination X. Yes, so was. He must throw a lot of strikes. Hope or that helps you. Balls. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that wasn't Dominatrix. I read that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I don't know. <laughs> uh, another question from YouTube is: What can I do to outplay dry lanes when even plastic is hooking too much? And a second question is also, does PAP matter on pancake core balls? Can I give you my answer real quick on the yes. first part of that? Yes. 
put your balls in your bag and go home. Yes, go somewhere. Else. <laughs> <laughs> um, if if legs are that dry that plastic is is overhooking, I, Let me I say don't that know where you fall into that. There bag. was more to this question that I okay. kind of. Apparently, this bowling alley. Every time he goes there, it's like this. Okay. So that's even more of a reason not to go there. Yeah. So, I was kind of kidding, but like when I, you'd get to tournaments where you would get so frustrated because there was just, it wasn't a challenging lane condition. It was a non-playable lane condition, mm -hmm. and you learn from that. You maybe don't go back to that tournament or that center if you don't match up well to that. But if that's the case, yeah. I mean, especially if you're just talking about going out to practice, just try and go somewhere else if you don't have that option. Let's just say you. You go. You do go to a tournament, and they're that dry. What do you do? You get the well, ball around the head pin, and you make yeah, your throw straight. Yeah, <laughs> really. I from mean, a coaching, from can. a coaching aspect, and and because I contribute so many articles in Bullversity that are instructionally based, the couple of things that you could try if you haven't already is you could increase your speed, you can change your loft distance, you can take a little hand out of the ball. In other words. Uh, break your wrist down a little bit where the thumb leads the fingers getting out of the ball. Uh, just change it a little bit uh, and don't grab at the ball or try to lift it. And the other thing is to try not to minimize or eliminate finger rotation. So you have a lower axis tilt and the ball rolls on a true or forward roll angle. Those will help a little bit. Also you may have to expand your ability to play an angle of attack from uh, the edge of the lane, uh, which is commonly referred to as a gutter shot, or way inside where you may play fourth arrow, fifth arrow, something like that. Uh, you have to figure out a way to get the place of the lane where you get the most consistent reaction first, and then from there you can make some fine-tuned adjustments. Uh, but again, it may be limited to how effective that will be, but it's certainly worth trying. If you're bowling league there regularly, you can, you know, unless you quit the league, you're going to have to That's face it. Be able to. So you got to find something to do. You can polish a plastic ball. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say you're going to get a good angle of entry or it'll, it'll hit real good, but at all. if you can get a consistent reaction, get to the pocket often yeah. enough, uh, you know that that's worth it too. But don't be afraid and work when practice sessions with playing different angles on the lane to get familiar with them because people tend to play their favorite area of the lane all the time. And when the lane breaks down, the oil breaks down, if it's a high friction surface, uh, it's going to hook quite a bit. And, uh, and a lot of times people refer to hook at different points on the lane. Sure. You know, uh, it, it can hook early in the mid lane uh, and then again on the back end. So you have to uh, make some, some decisions, and that comes from practice, maybe discussing it with your coach or your pro shop professional. And that question was from Nicholas Saifan. Sorry if I butchered that. But that was a good attempt, though, with that last one. Right? I was sitting here waiting for that to happen. Uh, the second part of the question we can do real quick. Yes. Uh, PAP, no, it doesn't really matter on a pancake weight block. I mean, if you're using that weight block and you are attempting to do some type of dynamic drilling, you may want to pay attention to what you're doing. We, we saw it a few years back when the PBA did the plastic ball tournament and I saw some of the balls that came out of there and they were shifting labels a little bit and putting extra holes in, but nine out of ten times, no, that doesn't matter at all. Back in my day, yeah. and I remember <laughs> a tournament we used to bowl at King Louis West Lanes in Kansas City on the Pro Tour every year, uh, George Pappas discovered it worked real good and he told me, drill some bottom weight, drill that top weight out of the ball. So get that ball to hook and set. Get it to set up and roll up uh, so you don't have to uh, worry about hooking it and you can keep it in the track longer. Well, you don't see the ball track as much now on these modern surfaces, but yeah. we would take, and every ball was a pancake weight brock back right. then. Uh, so you're probably talking about plastic balls or some of the basic urethane balls. Uh, but you can drill some of the top weight out of them, uh, but essentially on dry lanes uh, or your P, uh, uh, pack cake core blocks, PAP isn't going to change much. So I wouldn't worry about it too yeah. much. Drill them over the label. Yeah. All right, let's talk about some upcoming product releases. There's a bunch on August 9th. Uh, the Brunswick Absolute Nirvana, Fanatic BTU, also the Radical Ridiculous Pearl and Xeno, and the Deviate Vandal Smash and Deviant Pearl. Also, we have from Hammer the Dark Legend Solid, and from Track the Heat Extreme. And then on August 23rd, we have the Columbia 300 Swerve GT, 
and the Ebonite Game Breaker 2 Phenom. I'm sure there'll be more releases. I'm sure, hopefully, by now you know about all of our contests, but uh, each week on BowlingBall.com we give away a bowling ball, and you can click on the 52 weeks, 52 winners image on the right side of the page to enter. Uh, you can also head over to Bowling Boards, and they give a ball, away a ball every week as well. Uh, go to BowlingBoards.com, register, and make at least one post per week to be entered. And on Pyramid Bowling, you can head over to their Facebook page. That's Facebook.com slash Pyramid Bowling. And each week they give away some sort of really cool item, whether it be a ball or shoes or a bag. And for all these contests, make sure you sign up every week because they do reset you want to make sure you're entered to win some free stuff. That's right. And if you want to have your question answered on Talk Bowling, you can email us at questions at talkbowling.com. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash talkbowling, on Twitter at talkbowling, or leave a comment on any Talk Bowling episode on talkbowling.com. Send us your questions. We want to answer them coming up soon, so make sure you get those to us. And last week's question of the week, what was the name of the team professional bowling organization prior to the advent of the Professional Bowlers Association? And the answer was the National Bowling League. That is correct. All the players that eventually became tour players uh, in those regions of the country that had a team in the league would participate. And they, it was pretty exciting stuff. Uh, then when the PBA formed, they still thought that that National Bowling League team format was interesting. So the American Bowling Congress had classic team night. Mm -hmm. And the players would get together and bowl as teams. One time a year you would bowl as teams instead of individuals in the PBA. And I thought for many years that was a wonderful show. Did you know, Tony, every year I saw that tournament or participated in the, in the classic team night, and we had sponsors uh, from all the companies that you saw in those days that were advertising right. on the PBA Tour telecast. And we'd wear uniforms. It was cool. And we had uh, uh, the crowds were phenomenal. They would fill the stadiums. Uh, they always had stadium seating because it was at the convention centers downtown in every city that hosted it. So the National Bowling League morphed into the classic team night with ABC. I would like to see more team bowling uh, events. Mm -hmm. They they did have the World Team Challenge for a number of years, and then that, I think I got dominated by a couple teams and it dispersed. Yeah. But I think team bowling is what needs to be promoted and advertised more and more and more, uh, because there's nothing better than bowling on a, a good team in a competitive league. It's a lot of fun, and uh, I recommend team bowling highly. They just uh, they have the PBA league, and we sponsored. Silver Lake Adams Splitters this year. Cool. And uh, it is a cool event. Uh, and I think the fans all, the response to the PBA League has been very, very good. The, I mean, the, the fans at Portland Bowl, that's, <laughs> awesome. that's a whole new yeah. breed of people. But the response from the fans in general, yeah. watching those guys and girls compete yeah. together and, and having that head-to-head -head format, and it's, it's, it's kind of fun watching that happen. Wasn't it Team Budweiser that was you should, whoever that was? Like, if you see international team competition, oh, that's, I mean, the countries get behind it. It's oh, highly it crazy. Yeah. And collegiate bowling, team bowling, is an exciting right. thing to watch. If you live in an area where there's mm -hmm. collegiate bowling and then have a home-and-home -home match against some other college, you want to go watch it. It's fun. Not only are the kids talented, I say kids, I mean that friendly, they're young, young adults, but, man, are they talented players, and it, uh, it's very competitive and it's exciting to watch. So just... Thought I'd bring that up. All right, well, this week's question of the week, who is the youngest person to win a PBA regional title? I don't know the answer. I don't either. He's becoming quite popular. And Sorry, I guess I, guess I gave away that it's a guy, but... Yeah, he did. Sorry. Right. I'll let it slide. There's been a few women that have won. Yeah. All right, well, another episode in the books. In closing, please remember that BowlingBall.com is free shipping on every item every day. No hidden handling fees, no packaging fees, no added insurance fees, and no minimum purchase. The price shown is the price you pay at checkout. BowlingBall.com, it's where bowlers go. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.